Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. You know, every week I get questions, emails from people about using pallet wood. Uh, and so today I'm going to show you how much it costs you to use free pallet wood. Now, to be honest, I almost never bother with pallet wood anymore. It's just too hard on blades and jointer and planer knives. Uh, but this one had just such a gorgeous barnwood gray look to it. I just couldn't resist seeing if I could salvage something from it. Now, what I discovered the hard way is that even though you might see pallets laying around in industrial areas, when you go and look at them to pick them up to take them home, some of them are really in bad shape, so you don't even pick them up. Um, but the ones that you do pick up are often in pretty bad shape too. So here's some of the things that will help deter what kind of a pallet you get. For example, look at the top of this one. You can see how the wood is broken up here. The other thing you'll notice that on every pallet, all of the ends are split. So basically you need to cut off all of the ends, which sort of only leaves you with some good material in the middle. The other thing that you might know about most pallet material, it's not three quarters of an inch. It's thinner than that, and sometimes the dimensions vary. So it's very often five eighths of an inch, sometimes it's a half inch. So you never really know what you're getting until you pick it up and bring it home and start measuring it. They also use scrap wood, and you'll find knot holes all over the place. Once in a while, you get some good wood. And of course, there's nails and staples and all sorts of bits of metal everywhere in it. And if you're not careful, that can and it will ruin tools and blades. So here's the back of this pallet, and you can see the nice uh, light brown wood, uh, and that's because it hasn't been exposed to uh, sun and rain and it's the other side of course that I wanted but just so you look at the wood on this because this is some of the wood that you might be getting on a pallet well first of all this top board is completely useless because it's got a great big crack there's almost nothing another big crack here it's almost nothing there that's useful um, this board is okay and that one's okay uh, the bottom one's got another big crack in it you can it's it's firewood. Now these two boards here and all of these boards underneath, the problem with these boards is they've been sitting in dirt and gravel and they have rocks embedded in them, little bits of rock and gravel. And when you try and run that through a jointer or a planer, there is so much rock in there and sometimes you might get little pieces of metal. Uh, what it does is it damages your, your blades. It puts, it pits them. Um, I've had the odd one. I ha I've had a big gouge in it so the blade is completely destroyed. So you get free pallet wood and then you destroy a 30, 40, 50 dollar set of blades or, or at the at the very least sharpening um, because this wood down here you can you really don't want to run this through a planer or a jointer um, it just it's too it's just too rough to do anything with for the disassembly of the pallet I'm going to use a circular saw and a reciprocating saw and I've got two special blades that I use in these uh, both carbide tipped they both go through nails all day long um, and you don't have to worry about them ruining your blades or your saws so uh, and I'll put links in the description on Woodwork Web you'll be able to go and see you will not be disappointed uh, with those blades they're excellent the other thing you'll discover very quickly is that you're going to end up with an awful lot of waste. There's a lot of waste in pallets that you can't use for anything. Um, if you've got a fireplace, you may be able to burn some of the wood in the fireplace. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to haul it away. And a good chance for me to talk quickly about safety, of course, eye protection, ear protection. But the other thing that a lot of people don't know, a circular saw, the same as with the table saw, you want to set the blade height to just go just beneath the material. So you don't want to leave the blade hanging down because that's dangerous. Um, so we, I've already set, you can see I've already set the height of the blade. So I'm going to plug the battery in and we'll make our cuts.
Now, the reason I break down the palettes the way I do is because I don't want to spend my time. Um, I could use a, a, a wrecking bar, but I don't want to spend my time driving nails through and then pulling them all out. Um, I want to do this as quickly as possible. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to end up cutting the ends of these boards off anyway. Um, so if I do it at the disassembly stage, it just saves me that much more time. Um, and then using the a recip saw in the middle is just a quick easy way there are a few nails in there but they're easy to get out you don't have to dig at them now what am i left here in the end so take away the scrap that's nothing i've actually taken my tape and i figured out what i have left here and some of these boards even though they look like they're six inches they're cracked they're not usable and i've taken into account some of those this one here there's a big um edge on it that you can't use this one here of course we've looked at it, it's all cracked what i've left here with is a total of eight board feet all of this here works out to eight board feet and i'm being generous even at that um, and when i look at the cost of lumber because this is this is all fur lumber and it's a grand total of $8 worth of lumber here. If I went to the lumber store and bought this lumber, that's what I would pay. Now remember, that is kiln dried and planed, probably plain both sides. If I went to a mill and bought this, um, I'd probably be paying about 60 cents a board foot for rough sawn lumber, which is what this is. Uh, so it would be like $6 worth of wood here. So that's what I've saved is $8. That's what I've got here is about $8 worth of wood that I can't use my planer or my jointer. I can really only sand. Um, I can't use my bandsaw on it because I'm afraid of, of wrecking the blade on that. Um, I could use my table saw on some of it, so that's what I have. Now this wood has been outside, so what I'm going to do, because I don't want the ends to check anymore, I might actually just cut that one off there, I'm going to end seal all of the ends here just so it doesn't check anymore, but I also wanted to take a moment to check it for, to see what sort of uh, moisture content we're at. Well, we're at 15%, which is that's actually pretty decent. Uh, so it needs to sit inside for probably two or three months before I can use that. And that will get it down to about 9 or 10%. So that's good. Well, that concludes my video for today. And there's my lovely wall of sun-bleached wood. And I just love the color of this wood. Is it worth getting pallet wood? I'm going to leave that up to you. By the time you invest in bits and blades and tools and gasoline, um, it may not be worth it for you, but I'm going to let you make that decision. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.